It's a moment that's been decades in the making, getting the first ever waste out of one of the oldest radioactive waste stores in the world and one of the first buildings on the Sellafield site. The waste being grabbed by an overhead crane here has sat untouched for around 50 years. Underneath it is a 15 metre pile stretching back to when we first started filling the silo in 1952. The metallic fragments being removed are the inevitable spoil of a mission of global importance. The need to get a seat at the top table of nuclear defence just after the Second World War. But having done that vital job, the waste has been a big problem for the UK. How do we empty a locked vault that was built with no thought of getting the waste out? How we finally cracked the safe is a multi-layered story, so we need to start at the beginning. The pile fuel cladding silo is a nuclear waste store built in a hurry. In the aftermath of the war, when the world was rebuilding but also rearming, there was a global race to build the atomic bomb. Making plutonium meant making waste, and at the time, the simple design of an agricultural grain silo was deemed good enough to store our offcuts. PFCS was designed with little consideration of how one day it would be demolished or how the waste would be retrieved from the facility. Since the last waste was deposited into the facility, it has been under a care and surveillance program looked after by Sellafield operations teams. It's important that we transfer this waste from this aging facility into a modern waste store. It represents one of the most difficult decommissioning challenges and the highest priorities for Sellafield Limited and the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority. As well as the sheer size of the building and the volume of waste inside its six different compartments, there are other challenges. Some of the wastes are potentially flammable in air, so each compartment needs to be inerted with argon gas as a precaution. It's also located in a crowded section of a busy nuclear site and is surrounded by a maze of pipelines and other sensitive buildings. Overcoming these challenges meant painstaking and dedicated planning and preparation by hundreds of people over many years. The first step towards retrievals was the construction of this large concrete superstructure next to the silo which houses all the retrievals equipment. Once the substructure was in place it enabled us to install these giant 12 tonne steel doors. This allowed us to drill holes in the side of the silo while maintaining a safe barrier between the waste and the outside world. This meant that we were now in a position for the installation of the nine modules which would ultimately hold all the retrievals equipment which enabled us to reach into the silo and retrieve the waste. Bechtel Cavendish Nuclear Solutions have been involved in every stage of the, of the retrievals programme. We've helped deliver the detailed design, the procurement, the manufacture, the installation and the commissioning of the silo shield doors and of the retrievals equipment. We also helped engineer the method for cutting the holes in the silo walls. We built a replica of the silos and the retrieval equipment at a shipyard in Recife in Scotland and this enabled us to fabricate, assemble and partially commission the equipment in a non-nuclear environment giving us confidence in that equipment and de-risking the program before bringing it to Sellafield and testing it in the nuclear environment. The success of the project is down to the collaboration of all parties involved, including all of BCNS's supply chain and our supply chain partners. Our customer, Sellafield Limited, has all helped make this possible. Um, the, 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 the DNA of the project is collaboration, and I think if you walk around the offices and you walk around this project, you will see that collaboration is the heartbeat of the project. Behind the vast engineering, getting the waste out is actually pretty simple. Job one is bringing the waste box to the plant inside a transport flask. The highly engineered duplex steel waste box is removed from the flask and raised into the building. Once the box is in place at the top, a crane reaches into the silo, lowers down and grabs a jaw full of waste. It lifts the waste up, recoils the grab so it's hanging over the waste box and then drops it into the box. Repeat until the box is full. Put a lid on it and then lower the box to the bottom where it came in. Bolt the lid on using a robotic arm, swab and check the box for any contamination and then it's ready to be put back in the transport flask to be driven to a new store on site where it will be kept safely until eventually being consigned to a geological disposal facility in the future. As well as machines, we need people to deliver the cleanup work. Operators have trained on virtual simulators and the test rig before even touching the actual equipment on site. 
The process can only be automated to a point, and human skills and dexterity are needed to deliver this work. We've gone through various training packages uh, to get to this point where we're at today. Um, and going back four years, four years plus, it started from the beginning with the retrieval simulator. So everything that you see here on the cameras has all been sim uh, trained in a simulated environment um, before the operators have used any live equipment to get a, a, a real feel for how the crane works and the different controls and all the procedures we've got. So it's been a very long time coming uh, to get to where we are today. I haven't personally been here for over five years. Quite proud of the teams on, on the training they've done and the challenges we've faced and how the teams have dealt with them uh, today to get to where we are. Sellafield is here to create a clean and safe environment for future generations. Starting this work, which will take around two decades to finish, is another iconic moment showing our progress in delivering our purpose. The journey that we've been on to get to where we are today has, has taken, frankly, uh, decades. There's been so many people involved in that journey, all the way through from, from designers right at the start, uh, procurement, uh, the supply chain, uh, engineers, operators, pre-ops, maintainers, uh, project people, everybody you could possibly imagine. And because it's taken so long to get to where we are today, a lot of those people aren't actually working on the project anymore. I just wanted to say amazing and thanks to everybody who's been involved, especially the operators who over the last few days have been extending the boom, completing the testing and starting to remove the waste. It's an amazing achievement and I wish them all the very best now and for the, for the decades to come as we, as we empty the facility. So thank you very much.